Hey, welcome to the We're Libertarians daily updates on the COVID virus. Uh, we got, or I'm sorry, Chinese flu. I don't, I, I keep messing that up. Ryan Holt, how are you doing today, buddy? <laughs> doing all right. I all right. think even Trump has decided to give that one up. Oh, really? Yeah, um, he hasn't said it the last few days. Well, as a Trump supporter, I support him no matter what he does. So whether he embraces it or goes away from it, I'm sure it yeah. was the right, it was the right decision. The, of course. Uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes. Uh, all right. Well, they just passed the big old stimulus thing. We are breaking that down right now. We aren't going to break it down in this one. They're going to break it down tomorrow. Chris and Reinhold will both be on the show and talk about all that. We are still looking through it and want to make sure we don't miss ever, anything. So we're doing the research, but uh, I feel it's necessary to just tell you in case you're wondering, there was a $2 trillion ish stimulus is what they're calling it. Stimulus. They're calling it a stimulus. Yeah. They're calling it the stimulus and mm -hmm. There's some things in there that are iffy that I've already found and, and people are talking about. So I want to get a little bit more into that. And Trump talked a little bit about it on his press conference here recently. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how what he says lines up with what we find when we look into it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not always fair. the most accurate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, everything that comes out of the White House is always, you just listen to the press briefing and you can turn off the news for the rest of the day. Cause that's just, well, it's like, it's like he said today that, uh, we're testing more than, more than anybody. We've tested more than South Korea tests and okay. oh. by numbers that's true, but per capita it's way off. So they're like, yeah. they have like one in every 200 people tested and we have one in every 700 people tested. Right. So, I mean, we have a large country with a lot of people being able to make stuff. So we should be able to do a lot bigger numbers. Uh, we should be able to match them cap per capita, but we don't. And he was dissing uh, Joe Biden, who had said some things about the lack of testing. So he, he took a little offense to that and tried to push back. But he did so in a way that's very misleading and not exactly uh, going to do him any favors, too by saying that our tests are better because they're American tests and they're the best tests ever. They're perfect tests. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's the uh, second obviously. round of tests they had to make because the first rounds didn't work so well. Right. So I, I don't know about that. So, so already, but, yeah. Anybody who owns an American appliance knows that mm -hmm. those clearly don't break more than, you know, Chinese or Japanese made appliances or cars. Right. I mean, obviously American cars never need repairs. That's, that's a hallmark of them. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. Uh, that's not, not that everything's worse in America. We're just, we're humans like everybody else. Technology is technology. Yeah. I mean, that's but the thing is that the reason we're having problems getting good and more vol voluminous tests out there and getting testing done is because uh, the impedance of government. We have con companies that are just trying to donate and help and do that sort of thing. There's one county in Colorado where there's a bio company that works in that count, that county, mm -hmm. uh, two of the owners work there and they've developed tests and they're saying that they can test everybody in that county. Wow. Right. So they're putting, putting out enough to test every single person in that certain can that specific County. And if we can get that type of effort being done by everybody else in the country, which is happening, there's a lot of people, you know, 3M and Haynes and a bunch of other people are trying to do everything they can think of to help we have businesses, we have individuals, we have people pushing forward to make things better right. uh, and doing the work that people seem to think government should be doing, but government can't seem to get out of its own way as right. usual. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the usual, that's how it started here in the United States. You know, Helen Chu was the first one to do some testing uh, up in, you know, Seattle and she had to break the law to do it. She actually had to break a specific, you know, uh, don't do it order. And then after she did it, she had to break a cease and desist order to do it. And she was just a researcher for uh, flus in general, not even this virus, but she was like, oh, I can probably modify this. Did it there. We talked about this with Brian um, just a couple of days ago, but uh, Germany, they were, uh, G Germany was uh, one, one clinic, one private clinic was able to make like 1.6 million tests in a day. So, it, and it was something like, oh yeah. And, and it's not even expensive. They were even like, we can actually give these out for free with just our good name attached to them. And that, and that good advertising is, is all we need. It's not even apparently that expensive. When they were wanting to send some over to the United States and we told them no, because yeah, we wanted American made tests. 
Right. American made tests. And, and part of this has slowed the whole problem. Even when Helen Chu did it, the whole issue, especially this flattening curve, is you wanted to stay on top of it, right? Figure out where it is. The, the horror that she found was that she had tested somebody who, the, the first positive test here wasn't somebody who had traveled, wasn't somebody who came. They had it, which means they got it from somebody else, which means it was already not only here, but here and in force. So when right. you get these numbers, like you're saying, they are hard to say, it's hard to say anything but cherry picked, but they are, they are forcibly cherry picked, I guess, because we just say we only want, you know, we only have this well, amount of tests. You only get the, given to these people. Well, they started off with saying that the only people who could be tested were people who had been out of the country in the last two weeks. Yeah. And it's like, sorry, it's already here. And, and that's the thing Trump is trying to make the point of today where he says, well, we closed the, we closed the borders of China and nobody wanted us to do that. I'm like, nobody said nothing about, not wanting you to do that what they said was it's not going to help i mean it's not going to be that it's not going to stop it right it's here you know it's too late to to think closing the borders to people from china is magically going to prevent the the virus from getting here and once it's here it doesn't matter at that point right so you need to focus yeah. on other things and he wants to keep focusing on that as as his big well i, I did this and we saved thousands of people's lives and i'm like well that's not something we can really prove Right. You know, so <laughs> right, you can yeah. say it all he wants. We can't say it's not true, but uh, that's just not how these things work. And uh, I, I know I've been talking about uh, a video that was out recently that details a lot of the problems we had since 2016, 2017, that mm -hmm. resulted in, in us having a slow jump on this. Um, and there's a, a lot of things in there that just astonished even me. Yeah. Um, one of the big things was that during the transition between Obama to Trump, they did exercises. They did, uh, you know, certain types of uh, emergency exercises. And they had like 30 people from Trump's organization who were in these meetings and they went through these, this stuff. And one of them was a pandemic. And what do we do if there's a pandemic? And they were taught you need to, get testing out as soon as possible. You need to have social distancing. You need to do these, all these things that we're talking about now. Yeah. They were told this back then. The only problem is, is that a year later, none of those 30 people work for the administration anymore. And ah. none of that information had been passed on. Then there was a task force that Obama had set up in 2014 for pandemics because they were worried about Ebola. Uh-huh. Uh, so that task force had been tasked with, you know, making sure to be, have everybody prepared for this and everything else. Uh, in 2018, Trump disbanded it. And when he was asked about it at the time, he said, well, I'm a businessman. I don't like paying people money for not doing anything. They're just sitting around. If we ever have a pandemic or something like that, we could call them back quickly and it'll be fine. Yeah, that's like that's like saying insurance is useless because you're paying right. them to do nothing ninety percent of the time. Right? So, yeah. so he they disbanded it. Uh -huh. There was no there was no uh, team anymore. And then when this came back up, and he was you know starting to talk about trying to transfer from it being it's a hoax to oh this is something we need to take seriously. Um, he was asked about that task force, and he says, "I don't know anything about that. I didn't do that." It's like, we have you on video saying you did it and why you did it. Right. And now you're saying, I didn't do it. It's like, yeah, okay. he's, kind of, he's kind of pulling the Biden. Like I didn't, I, I mean, I know you got me on video and saying I did stuff in the Ukraine, but I, I, I didn't actually do it. I, I just caught it, got caught on video. Now I know you and I, I, I am interested in that. And I know that's a, that's a separate conversation, whether he did or didn't and just lied about it and whatever. No, it, it's more a case of him saying that he did something and then other people saying, Oh, that means he did this other thing, which he, there's no proof that he ever did. You're right. So it, it, it's kind of, it's kind of a, uh, it's the weird way that that whole story was invented. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, don't tell lies if you don't like stories getting, <laughs> I guess. Um, all right. So one of the things that I want to talk with you about today is I know you and I have, have uh, we see both sides of all points of view. I think that's something that we can value about each of us, but uh, we probably have settled on something of a disagreement. Uh, it, it's happened in the group chat. Chris talked about it on our very first COVID daily update. And I said, I didn't want to get into it then and wait till a more formal time, but our, our formal time may be coming to an end. 
And so I just wanted to talk about the role of government stepping in and shutting things down in the absence of a private sector capability or anything like that. So uh, I guess, how do you feel about government saying you can't be open? I mean, everything from you can't leave your house, depending, you know, let's open this up to global governments. You leave your house, we'll shoot you dead, to, you know, please don't leave your house unless you're going to the grocery store or, you know, hospitals, to doing nothing and letting people party in spring break. So there's, there's several areas there to get into, but one thing I want to bring up, and a lot of people who talk about this don't know, is that we, we have a certain system in place right now that exists, and we may not like that. We may not like the way the system is as libertarians, um, but it exists, and, and we kind of have to deal with that situation. So when we, th we say businesses should and would just close because it's the right thing to do, uh, but if we were getting good information, then that's more likely to happen. When we're getting told it's a hoax, when we get people saying this isn't a big deal in the government and passing that information out, then a lot of businesses have to kind of start thinking, well, do I need to shut down or do I not need to shut down? What's the real information here? And trying to get that information is hard to do. It was hard to do at the beginning of this. And another thing is, is that there are companies who have insurance uh, in case of emergencies. So, if they were to shut down the business for three weeks, they don't get to collect on that insurance unless. Um, you want me to stop for a minute? And... It said the recording has stopped, but my thing it says. is now streaming live on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And it still says recording. I think that was. <laughs> Ignore that. Let's just keep going. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but so the businesses are shut, can shut down, um, but they won't be able to collect that insurance unless the government says they have to shut down, then the insurance will pay out. So a lot of times uh, some of this declarations by government is just to give cover for the insurance companies so that there's something official done, right? So it's, it's not something I think that in a libertarian society we would, we would expect to see, you know, and we're not gonna see that here. We're not gonna see armed guards and police roaming around and making sure everybody's quarantined and nobody's leaving their house and shooting them if they do. But, um, a lot of the times what you're seeing is, is these are more suggestions and, and they have so many exceptions. There's no way they could enforce it anyway. Right. So they could say, Oh, you can only go to do this or that, or this other thing or this other thing. So they can't pull you over because you would just say you're doing one of those things. They can't prove you wrong. So they're just let you go. So what's the point? So people right. can do pretty much what they want um, because they know there's no bite behind it. Yeah, and I and and, and I, I get that that you have the capability of breaking the law. I mean, you could I guess tell, you could be honest with a law enforcement officer, which you should never ever ever do. But I guess you could, and say yes, I actually am going to visit my mom because she's sick. That's against the law. You're only supposed to go to the doctors or to the grocery store, and then get in some trouble. But since you already know that you'll get in trouble if you tell the truth then you'll just lie about it, you know? Right. I mean, it could be used as a tool to harass minorities or harass the downtrodden or the, or the, the minority thought in the country or the, you know, whatever displaced class of people. Right. So that's always the problem we have with those types of things. But in this situation, it, it, there was really no way for that to be used for that purpose. Right. I mean, uh, and if we, but, but, now we'll say this, it was used for that purpose a couple right. of times yeah. when we had some uh, of the great ICE people going in and take, and trying to take people out of their homes because they knew they were going to be home right. right, to get them deported. That, but they did say that they were going to stop doing that. So Well, and then after they said they were going to stop doing that because they, they caught flack for that, they had, well, they had somebody pretend to be a doctor and sting yeah, the guy in his own that. house. That's awful. Like an yeah. ICE agent pretended to be a doctor. Somebody was sick, says, oh, I'll come over to your house since you can't leave your house and <laughs> deported somebody who was sick because they disguised a doctor. Uh, it's, that's, it's the craziest thing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like to have, have some compassion for what's going on out there for five minutes. What's wrong with you people? I don't understand. Right. Even, I, even as bad as I feel about the people who do that job that, it's, it's something that I could never imagine myself doing. Um, you, you don't expect them to be that sociopathic to say, well, we're going to use this as a great way to bump our numbers up and get these people out of here. Right. And even if you're not big on saying like one 
class gets harassed more than the others. I think you and I would both disagree, but uh, it, it, even if you, you don't like that kind of angle of thinking, think about the people who wouldn't know to lie to a cop about where they're going, right? Like, let's say you don't know uh, that it's illegal to go anywhere except grocery shopping into the doctor right and you go out in public what type of person are you you will you probably it sounds like you don't own a tv maybe you don't have internet access you know and, um one of the problems that they had i mean i heard this with both san francisco and la is now it's illegal to just exist in public which of course you have a lot of homeless people you had a homeless a lot of homeless projects that you never finished they spent the money on it never got around to finishing the projects you know, and, and, and so the homeless, you know, obviously they're like, well, I didn't know it's, Ill it's illegal to just exist here right now, you know, and so they're busted. Uh, other people who I just think might, I mean, let's be honest, there's a lot of people who just aren't in touch with politics. And even right now with the virus going around, I'm sure they've heard of it, but just say, I don't care. I'm going to continue. Uh, as soon as I see a post about it, I don't care. I'm going to look at my cat po pictures and just keep yeah. going with my well, life. There are people who are just saying, I, I don't want to hear any more about it. Like uh, yep. I was listening to one podcast and they were like, we know that people are probably not wanting to hear about this pandemic and what's going on. They're tired of hearing about it. It throws them into panic. So skip to time code. This is when we're done talking about this and we can talk, we'll talk about other things. Right. right. So that's what they're trying to do. Cause they understand there are people were just saying, I don't want to, I'm done with this. Right. So, right. Uh, I mean, but we have that in, 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 so we have that with every law. I mean, any, any time the government gets involved and puts a law in place, there's a, there's a, a use of force and that force can be abused by anybody. So there are lots of people who, when they get pulled over for a traffic ticket or like, and they say, Hey, can we search your car? They're like, Oh yeah. Cause they don't think they can say no. Yeah. Uh, or they're answering questions that they shouldn't be answering and they get into trouble because they're looking for, they find something that's completely different than what they were pulled over for, but oh, now we're going to take you to jail. Yeah. And you, you just say, no, there's a great group of a couple guys who do, who are lawyers who do this, uh, what, shut the F up every Friday, right? Shut the, <laughs> shut the F up Fridays where they just yeah. say, if a police comes to talk to you, what do you do? Shut the F up, you know? Shut the F up. Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, <laughs> Right. I mean, it's, and, and that's lawyers telling you that, right? I mean, this is, it's mm -hmm. funny because you watch TV. It's like police, your friends always tell them the truth. And lawyers are like, mm -mm, don't No, any lawyer, every lawyer yeah. will tell you, shut up until I'm there. Don't yep. say, you don't have to answer anything. Yeah. Shut up. Cause and then, the, cause they and then, can come in and do something. If they come in and you've already started talking, their, their hands are tied and right. they have a lot fewer options they could do to help. And again, you. this involves knowing your rights. And there's a certain type of person that knows their rights. You know, back when I was younger, I was like, well, what kind of person, even I remember having this debate in middle school. I was like, what kind of person doesn't know their Miranda rights? They shouldn't have to read it. You should have to know that. But as I grew up, I found out that probably actually most people don't know their, their Miranda rights. You well, know? People don't and, know how to balance a checkbook or how to, you know, yeah. do lots of things. And that's why they get into kind of trouble because we don't teach kids that in school anymore. We don't teach them how to think or about how to live. We teach them about how here are these facts that you need to, to rote memorize in order to pass this test so we can get you out of here so that you can go and start your life. You know, it's, yeah. they're not, they're not building the generate the next generation. They're just delaying their growth for a lot of, right. for a lot of them. And we all know this type of people, right? And, and I think as, as an adult, you're going to meet them and say, and it's easy to just say, well, you should have learned or you can learn or whatever. Maybe they didn't, mm -hmm. whatever. But these are the type of people I'm talking about, I guess, to get back on the subject. These are the type of people that don't understand to lie to the police. And these are the right. type of people that are going to get busted for it. Now, that's an extreme circumstance. Obviously, most places haven't totally shut down. In fact, some places are even saying, hey, look, we actually encourage you to go on walks and not get cabin fever and do some healthy things for yourself, you know, breathe the air. Don't, don't get in groups of 10 or more, please. But you know, you can walk your dog and sing and, you know, and, and do exercises and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, I guess the issue that I have with, with government shutting down, and I understand because I completely understand the, the, the situation that we're in. In one hand, we don't want to interfere with the private sector. In the other hand, we've already interfered with the private sector a whole right. ton, right? And so if we create a problem, this is, this is kind of the, the catch-22 we had even with the George W. Bush auto bailouts. They said, well, we forced them to do all of these things that gave them a tremendous competitive disadvantage with all of these other products, right? And, and we made it so that they're unable to compete. Well, we created the problem. Well, now we're kind of on the hook for solving the problem a little bit. And so I, I find that a lot of people are, 
it's tough and it is nuanced because you have to understand the whole situation and say, well, how much should the government help somebody out if they interfered with them a little bit or a lot of it? It's, it's a matter, it's less a matter of like, yes, I like this and no, I don't. And more a matter of how much I like it and how much I don't because it's yeah. muddy waters. Yeah. And a lot of libertarians will say that if, if, um, so you have licensing restrictions for, for a lot of different, um, types of business, right? So businesses are getting screwed out over that. And they think, well, if a business is getting screwed out over that, they should be able to sue the government and get reimbursed for that money or get made whole. Well, what happens in the situation where the stuff that the government did puts them into it that, you know, has put them into that situation where they can't be prepared for being shut down for three weeks. And then they get a situation where they kind of have to, right? So shouldn't the, shouldn't the government make them whole for what they put them in, you know, this type of situation they put them in. That's an argument to be made on the libertarian side of things too. But um, there's also part of the problem is, is that we want to make sure we make that point. Right. So we, we will, when we try to make the point when things are good, everybody goes, eh, whatever, you know, those people are just doing whatever, you know, that they don't understand. But when, right. when the time comes to something like this happens, people are paying attention, people are listening and some, so libertarians say this is when we should be making that point. We should be having that discussion. We should be getting this news out to people so maybe they'll think about, you know, they're getting lied to by the government. They're getting uh, bad information. They're, they're being told what to do like they're little kids. They're not being given the ability to go to work. I mean, this is when you grab those people and say, hey, it doesn't have to be this way. It didn't have to be this way. There's ways we could have prevented this whole thing uh, by going through a more libertarian uh, view of how we run government, run, run healthcare, run uh, disease control, that sort of thing. And I'm trying to put together something for that now where I, I have uh, very, very, basically a detailed list of this is how this could have been handled libertarian ways, right? So I'm going to try and do that for the, for the heretic. Um, cool. And, but, I'm, but I'm hoping to get, I, I think this is the time to make sure that we make that point, but yeah. not in, I, I don't think it was something we wanted to make the first week, yeah. right? Because people were scared. People were finally starting to go, wait a minute. Uh, I thought this was just the flu. I thought this was just uh, a hoax by the, the left trying to take down Trump, you know? Um, and then when it became, when the numbers started coming and the, and the realization that this wasn't a hoax started hitting people, I think that was the time to kind of be more positive and more let's get together and help work this through this. And yeah. now that we're starting to get through that, maybe on the back end, we can, we can come in and make those points. Right. I mean, we, right now we just don't have a perspective on it. Even right now, people are kind of 50, 50 on whether this kills more than tuberculosis every year, you know, you got well, it's already killed more than tuberculosis in the United States. That's true. So, so 500 yeah. deaths a year for tuberculosis. And we've already got nine is uh, the numbers I just saw were 911 people dead. Is it 5,000 a year for the USA on tuberculosis? Uh, I think 5,000 um, cases. I think it was only 500 deaths. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, yep. You're right. 500 and 515. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're, yeah, we're, we're about we're, that. We're past that. And, and we're going to go past that. We're going to see numbers in the thousands. Well, we, I, I mean, I'm just. I don't want to see numbers in the millions. I would love to keep it under that. Right. Uh, and that's. But it's going to go up. Yeah. I mean, and that's, and that's where tuberculosis is at, I guess I'm talking from a global perspective, right? Yeah. You, you know. Well, but look, look what this is going to be doing to people in, in Africa. I know we're not getting a lot of numbers out of Africa and it doesn't like there's any numbers there, but it's there. It's decimating yeah. and nobody's there reporting on it because well, they're worried about their own thing right now. That's like saying Russia has no yeah. cases. Well, they, well, they, they, they said, I think the they test, said they right? had like 19 cases and they were like, yeah, no. And, and I think things. they finally came out today and said, we may not be reporting all the cases we have yet. And <laughs> Maybe and not. Kind of hedging their bets because I they mean, know they're going to have to. I mean, the USA, which eventually. is pretty modernized as far as things go, we're not reporting all our numbers. So we know nobody's doing it, right? I mean, we're pretty good and they're, and they're still, you know, as far as things go. But anyway, so like, I guess the biggest beef that I have is I still don't like, I, I, I don't, I understand that we didn't have a private sector pretty much at all before this right i mean i mean private sector is almost fictitious at this point yeah you have some even what kind we of... call we call free market today isn't a free market it's not at it's all. crony capitalism there's way too there's more um was it there are more regulations in place than there were in china 
I right. mean, not China, but uh, but Canada, right? So Canada had more fewer regulations than we do. So, and specifically, I mean, I guess, I guess if we want to get deep with it. It's Keynesian, right? So because yeah. his whole theory is what you say is you say this is the direction we want to go in. We're not going to tell you what to do, but we're going to make laws that encourage you to do those things. And and this is something that Ayn Rand was like very afraid of. This is actually kind of the main villains in, in Atlas Shrugged, right? Where the guys that are saying like, we're not telling you how to run your business. We're just saying you can't use these railroads and you can use this one railroad. And it's like, well, that's... You tell me how to run my business. You tell me how to run my business, right? I mean, I mean, Dag and Tagger, by the end of that book, you just are so in like her shoes. You're just like, and you see that happen today. I mean, frankly, that is played out. I mean, it's not... As, as maybe apocalyptic uh, uh, that yet, but this wasn't 1984. She wasn't, she well, didn't have a deadline, you know? <laughs> and plus what we're getting to is we're getting a lot of just statements that aren't true. Like, um, like Trump said the other, like a week ago that we're going to have a, we're working with Google. Google's going to put up this website. It's going to allow you to put in your, your symptoms. And if you match the certain symptoms and you can go get a test for free and it's all going to work and it's going to be great. And it's going to work better than any, of the other government websites that have been put up recently, putting a knock on the Obamacare thing, right? And then they went to Google and asked about it, and Google's like, "What? I don't. We don't know what he's oh, talking about." Oh yeah, the about. CEO got caught brushing his teeth, and he's like, <laughs> "What? What? When did I have this call? What is? <laughs> yeah, like the board is all like, did you did you talk to him? Did I talk to? Did somebody talk to him? I don't. Remember. Apparently, they have a <laughs> subcontractor who has started working on something like this, right? But they're like, it's going to be months." before we get something that's functional. I mean, this right. isn't something that's coming out next week like it was made to sound like, so. Right, and I guess, and I get that that's like kind of the, the point is that we didn't have something in place that would have been functional that businesses probably would take care of and had precautions about. Like you said, there's insurance against this type of thing. There, there's many ways that the market would have handled this. For example, it's, it's stupid to think that a free market would have no kind of unemployment insurance. I mean, it's mm -hmm. insurance. If it can be sold and it's something people want, it's going to exist. People seem to want unemployment, it would exist. However, right now that's taken through care of through a single entity, right? And that's the government. So when we say, well, you know, it, it's, it's kind of trying to pretend to behave like a market thing. It does a poor job as everything in government does. And so I guess I get the point that is like something needs to step in place because we didn't allow the free market there. To counter that point, this is, I can finally get on my point now, which is <laughs> now that we got a few minutes left. Oh, we're this. out of time. Uh, no, 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 we're not doing this. I'll go OT if I have to. Um, <laughs> it, it, the counter to this is that if the free market or if the government did the first thing badly, I don't really trust them with the solution either. And they, right. they appear to have already screwed these things up. Whenever they're able to take the power, just, you know, hey, wartime powers. I mean, the thing is, we always see this happen. When I think back to 9-11, there are certain things that, I mean, you and I talked about this specifically, that you say, okay, that was probably the right thing to do at the time, like grounding flights. I mean, you wouldn't think mm -hmm. that'd have to be a government thing to do, but you would think private you know, people would be like, well, obviously or, it's a, like the cruise least, lines, right? It's a disaster. At least there would be some organization. There'd be like an FAA, F, an FAA, but it wouldn't have to be a governmental body. It could have been a, a non-for-profit, non- I am uh, all about competition. So I would say multiple organizations, but I think even then these multiple organizations would have the same kind of, they would reach the same conclusion that yeah and they would probably work together training. because it makes sense to share data anyway for that type of functionality right. so you ground the planes for a few hours you make sure everybody's okay and then you get going again i mean this this happened i mean if you love history like i do you look at what happened with like railroads and there's some things where you could say like okay you know we had to do that and that's good but then what happens when it was time to release the power it kind of it's like when you give your dog a toy like and it's like well it's time to time to give it back it's time to be well, done. Oh, originally the railroads were done basically by private companies they were they were given grants from from the federal government to help them do it right uh that they paid back they were loans they weren't grants but they okay. they um they were using eminent domain to help get the property that they needed and that mm -hmm. i think that was the only involvement that the government had for the most part though the railroads were put together on the backs of private business oh a lot of it and then but when it came when it came time and they they took over yeah. for that they never gave it back. And they, yeah, they when, planned... it became, when it came a World War II thing, because World War II came in and they said, okay, we have to nationalize control over, you know, we need to put the, inter the interstate system in, we need to nationalize control of, tra of, of, of trains, that sort of thing. They didn't take over the train systems, basically, but they did 
base they took over the trains. Right. Yeah. They do. They do it without saying it without saying it. Kind of thing is yeah. how is how the government is operating. And, it's, and I think Trump was trying to suggest doing that recently. He was like, "Well, we're not. We're gonna, um, but we might buy some yeah. stock into there and and hold that stock like we did with uh, some of the the I think we did with uh, Chevy. Right. So. Right. Um, I just don't like doing that. <laughs> right. I understand that it can work, but I don't, I don't. Right. Like that and so my point is, I just, I think for me, I couldn't have predicted in, in the fallout of nine 11. And I was very much a, I was very much a Republican at the time. I was okay with probably some of the war. I was still like a very libertarian leading Republican. I think when the, you know, when the tea party came out and we're like, Hey, we're going to like actually decrease the budget and like actually, embrace the diverse communities i was like that that was kind of like where i was at i still wasn't uh, you know i'm not defending myself at all i was oh, no, I, they, I you, you didn't things, know that they right? were lying to you yeah right right and i <laughs> right and i believe that the wars were necessary and all that stupid stuff yeah. right well, and, and, so, and a, lot, a lot of people come to libertarianism slowly through that process where they go okay i understand this libertarian libertarian stuff but we still have to do this and we still have to do this and we have to make sure we're safe and we have to make sure these businesses don't fail yeah. and then when you start finding you're getting lied to yeah. repeatedly by the party you start pull, you start to go wait a minute why what and then you and then you make that leap. It, it's it's yeah. it's very rarely an overnight thing and started off with like lies that i was okay with like yeah. uh like like um i knew the accent was fake for george w you know what i mean and, mm -hmm. but and we had the press release by being like hey you know like i was working on the campaign i know <laughs> but uh <laughs> You know, we start off with the press release and I was like, okay, you know, like, I'm okay with that. And then it kind of got into the, well, we don't want to release his transcripts in college because we know he did a good job, but we want people to kind of think he was like a middling, we want people to think he's stupid. That way his well, missteps well, are chalked up to like just a the simple Republican nice party, thing. Yeah, the Republican parties kind of fell into this thing where they realized they could get people elected by being the guy you'd want to go have a beer with. Yes. And pulling back from, from intellectualism and the elite. Right. So right. they think that if you're too smart, you're, you're, you're elitist and you're one of those people. Yeah. We want to be more like the common man because that's where they think they can get their niche and get right. their votes from. And, in defense and it was of, all just. Uh, the elitism you know. sucks. I mean, having somebody tell you that they can run your life better than you sucks. Right. That like, part of it I, does. But, but there's a problem with issuing intellectualism as oh, sure. a whole because sure. of that and that's where they're going with it. absolutely absolutely that that's that's the like i it's the it's the whole thing like they threw the baby out with the bathwater. it's like mm -hmm. yes distance yourself from people who think they can run your life be better than you you can run your life better than you and then the anti-intellectualism please don't learn these things so that you actually run your life better than you right? Right. you <laughs> need information still... you need good information you need people know what they're talking about to give you that information and you need to be able to trust that information and you're not right. going to get that with government Right. I mean, you're just not. I mean, I, I mean, and you know what? Fossey has come up with some great things that he's saying, but we, you know, two years ago, he was the guy who was campaigning to what? Because gun control is a mental illness and trying to, and he's like, we're not allowed to study that right now, but we really want to do studies that prove that if you're a gun owner, you have mental illness. And I hated the dude. Right. So it's like, and here's the same guy. Now here's the thing again with the baby in the bathwater. He said a lot of stuff that is right about actual diseases, right? So, mm -hmm. like, and, and now comes time when I need to, like, take that intellectualism and throw out the elitism. Fossey can't run my life better than me, but I am not opposed to taking actual disease information from him because I am not a pathologist. I'm not an epidemiologist. You know, I, I need, mm -hmm. at some point, you need to trust people smarter than you. And, and you've got to choose who to trust. That's an absolutely fair thing. You know, Fossey has absolutely discredited himself based on, what he was doing a couple of years ago, but at the same time, other researchers are saying what he's saying. It's not like well, he he, him he discredited himself in that area because he's trying to, he's trying to make a right. maybe make a point uh, that was much more political in in thought process, but not necessarily science because he's saying we can't do the test right, so we don't know, but we think this might be the case. Let's go right. test it. Yeah, um, but that's different than I've been working with disease and 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 pandemics for. 30 years so yes. <laughs> and we, he was with bush the senior right so it's like mm -hmm. i've been doing this a long time I know what i'm talking about in this area and this is how these things work and this is how you fix it so right. he it, it's just like um you, paul, you say you have paul krugman or or even tom wood so we have the two opposite spectrums right there right so we have paul krugman and contra krugman they both have their areas of expertise but when they start talking about things that aren't in that area you kind of have to go, uh, you know, 
let me check that with right. some other things, right? So it, you can't just say, well, he's smart. They're smart about this thing. So therefore, I'm going to trust him on everything. That doesn't work. Right. That's how you get stuff like Trump worship or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what blue, no matter who, right? I mean, it's two sides of the same coin, just saying my, these people have my faith, no matter what they do, I'm sure it's the right thing and I'll defend it no matter what. But th so this is, this is, I, I really got to finish this point here. So this yeah. post 9-11 nonsense, right? We, I could not have predicted the Patriot Act. I just could not have pre predicted multiple wars. You know, I might've, for me, what was in my head was we send in a SEAL team, we snipe, anybody who was involved and then we get out and and w look at what it turned into just a total and so and and for me i think the reason this hurts is because i was very supportive of government after 9 11 because you just say hey this is this is the time when we come together this is the time we need to accomplish these things they they have intelligence that i don't have and i'm sure they're going to use it the right way them having intelligence I didn't have was true. Them using it the right way was not true. And so whenever they say, well, now we can restrict your travel. We can, we can keep you in your homes. We can shut down your businesses. We can shut down your churches. We can shut down this, that. And so, some things they've shut down are things that like you would kind of want them to shut down. Not everybody is letting everybody have a spring break, but then they are shutting down things like sheltering the homeless and doing blood drives and, and, what, uh, they really don't want you looking at prisons and, and making sure those people don't get the virus right now and, and any alternatives to that type of thing. And so for me, I just see this overreach. I can't predict right now, just like I couldn't predict after 9-11, what this overreach is gonna be. Sometimes like grounding the planes after 9-11, you can say, okay, yeah, yeah, that's something you should do. It doesn't mean everything they do is trustworthy. And ultimately the overreach after 9-11 is, was, I mean, we killed 500, at least 500,000 civilians. That's by our own counts. You've been big on mentioning that's not the full count, but we've killed at least half a million innocent people. Not our people, we just killed at least half a million innocent people in response to 9-11. In that case, the response was way worse than the problem. I, I see a very similar thing happen. I mean, do you disagree with that? Oh, I think it's a, it's a uh, potential for that. I think it's a very big possibility, but I think we need to be on our on our game and stopping that right so uh just like what happened with after 9 11 we a lot of people are like okay grounding the planes makes sense okay let's let's close the borders and stop people until we can figure out what's going on let's let's do this stuff um but libertarians were immediately saying we don't want you know the department of homeland security was going to make it all better and revamp our intelligence and have it all work together properly and as that's not worked nobody knew nobody expected it to work then either it was just another big bureaucratic uh, system that was going to be put in place it was just going to make it harder for people and then the patriot act came out and and there were libertarians who were going nuts about that and i was one of them but i also was trying to caution people and say look all the patriot act is just expanding on things that we already have to combat uh, drugs and to combat organized crime. All they're doing is expanding that to include terrorism. So that stuff already exists. So if you're going to be yelling about it, you should be yelling about that before, you know, now. So it's a problem that we need to address and we need to address it then too. But um, I think people start jumping on what they see and not realizing where it came from and, and, and that as well. So I think, I, I was just trying to make a point when we were having this discussion first is that the situation is what it is. We can't really change the society that we have around us that we have to work within right now. We'd love to, it'd be great. Um, but we have to deal with the situation now. And if we start seeing these things that we now know are temporary, because there's no way they can do a shutdown of the country for two years. And Trump said something about, well, we don't want to, we can't shut down for two years. Like nobody's suggesting that nobody even wants that. We just want to, it to where we can flatten the curve and we can try to get ahead of this. Uh, but shut? once that temporary stuff is gone and they start trying to implement permanent stuff, we really need to be step stepping up and saying, no, we can't have this. We're going to fix this. Let's fix it. Right. We've got through the crisis. Now, instead of just throwing something in that you think is going to fix the problem, uh, you, we need to understand what caused the problem before. And you guys don't want to do that because you, you know what the situation is going to be is that both sides screwed up for years and put us into the position we were in now uh, that allowed this to happen. Uh, let's get this out of government control. Let's get politics out of the position of trying to make these decisions. Let's give it to a private organization like the you know, Underwriters Laboratories. Let's make the CDC 
its own thing so that the CDC can operate without having to worry about who's running the government and whether they're told to shut up about things or not, which is what happened here. Right. So would you say, I guess, let, let, let's, let's go totalitarian on this one. Let's, mm -hmm. let's just go full extent. Our spring breakers, murderers, our churchgoers, murderers, <laughs> our people who work at buffets, murderers. Because this is, love me some Chris Spangle. This is one that we disagree with pretty hard, but he says yes. And does it violate the non-aggression principle at the very, you know, in your, in your mind? What do you, how do you feel about that? I think acting in a reckless manner is uh, not a good thing. The problem with the word murderer is I think it has a connotation and there's a legal definition and there's a what we think it is definition and all this other stuff too. So you have this thing called reckless homicide, right? So if you're acting in a reckless manner and you cause somebody else to die, that's considered reckless homicide. It's a form of murder. But murder usually inquires intent, like I intended to kill you, or I planned to do it, or I got behind the wheel of a car drunk because I didn't care, right? So that's, we're, we're, there's gradient levels there, right? And I think that there's, there are times when words are thrown around to try to get people to shock them into a point of view or to understand um, the position that the other person is trying to make. Sure. Uh, that not, may not necessarily be exactly accurate or, or what I see a lot of times when discussions like this and arguments people have is that people will throw phrases and terms out there to try to win the argument. But the problem is, is that the two sides don't agree on what we're really saying when we say those words. So is, it reckless, is it reckless homicide, I guess? Right. It, the spring break I think reckless it's reckless. Homicide. I think it's reckless. Uh, I don't know if it's manslaughter or homicide or, or whatever, but if you um, know that it, if, if anybody knew that they were sick, of course, that would be worse, right? But we're talking about people who don't know they're sick. But how many stories have we seen in the last few weeks, last week, where people were at a part, uh, there was a guy who was at a COVID party, right? They were getting together and partying um, in defiance of all of this. And they're going right. to just party at the COVID thing. The right. next day he tests positive for COVID. So he's probably got everybody at that party sick. Right. Now, is he responsible because he went to that party, uh, eschewing the knowledge that he was doing something, you know, that could it hurt somebody else and kill somebody else. You know, what sounds do we like label everybody, that? Sounds like everybody is, else is aware. Yeah, right? but the problem is, is what do we label that? What do we, how do we, how do we state what that mentality is in a way that accurately, accurately describes it without trying to say that they're purposely going in there and shooting up the place with a gun. Right. right? Or poisoning the, 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 the water or something like that. They're, they're, they're acting irresponsibly. They're acting recklessly. Um, is there a level of culpability we can apply to that to say that you violated someone's non, the, the non-aggression principle? You, you violated their space by doing this, but doesn't carry the connotation of, I plan to do this and kill these people. Right. Like, like with, the, with the spread of AIDS, we had a lot of people who spread AIDS around recklessly, yep. but yep. there were people who purposely went out knowing that they were infected, trying sure. to spread it around too. So those people are much higher level, worse, horrible people. Uh, but we have, we have to have some sort of way of talking about these ingredients that don't get people's ires up. But the, so people, who have those conversations. the people who didn't know and slept with somebody, are they, mm -hmm. are they guilty of aggression? I guess this, this take it back to the nap then, I guess, are they guilty yeah. of some type of aggression in the AIDS case or in this case today? Would you say yes or no? Um, I would say in a situation where it is known that you are uh, so, so with the COVID thing, anybody could be infected right now, right? The incubation period is so long that you can have it for a week to 10 days without knowing it and still be able to spread it. That's why it spreads so fast. So knowing that something's out there that's doing that and running through the society, I think that you are taking a, a violation of the nap by purposely uh, going against the recommendations on what you should do in those situations, right? Like I had a guy today, um, I did delivery from UPS today and I went out to talk to the guy. I stayed back and I asked him if I needed to sign for it. He said, no. So I said, okay. He says, I'm just going to put it on the porch. And I said, I'll take, I'll stay six feet away from you. And we kind of laughed about it and we had a good conversation, but we were definitely far enough away from each other that we weren't going to infect each other. Uh -huh. And I was like, you need to be careful, take care of yourself. And he's like, I know it's, it's hard out here. And, 
and he went on. So that's the way you can, you should act. That's, that's non-violation of the non-aggression principle, right? So, but if I were to have gone up to him and just started talking in his face with everything going on right now, I, I would be expected for him to push me back and, and keep me away from his personal space. Cause I would be in violation of that. But I think like in all saying? cases, I, right. And I think in all cases, when you hook up with somebody at a club, there's always the potential for you or the other person to have some kind of disease yeah. that hasn't manifested yet. And so I think that I, and here's the problem that I have, especially when we talk about the nap. Oh, you know, going to spring break violates the nap. Well, not letting people gather violates them. You have to aggress against them in order to do it. One's, for me, that is much more clear cut than the other, which involves, did I know I have it? Did I know I might have it? There's a way to say, if I get it, I'm okay with that. And I'm only going to hang around with other people like at a COVID party that are okay with getting it, that they are aware, right. hey, but, we all but, might get diseased. But, and, and then does everybody interact aware with it? Now, here's the thing. I think you can make that knowledge and know or you can not know. We just finished talking earlier about people who don't know their rights. That doesn't mean they don't have them. They just didn't know about them, you know? And so there is not some kind of, I guess, additional responsibility just because you didn't know. I don't feel. And so I right. think that if they shut down my buffet, which I admit is a place that a lot of people can get sick. I took a lot of pictures of a lot of elderly people coming into my buffet right before they shut us down. And they might know, they might not know, they might not care, but it's their choice. And I think if I have the choice to stay open, they have the choice to eat there. I have the choice then to say, they might infect me, I might infect them, I don't know which way, then when I come home, I might infect my family. And I can say, hey family, if you don't wanna hang around me, you can leave, or I can leave, or you can lock the door and kick me out. I think there's just too many interferences with voluntary action for me to say these people are committing manslaughter or murder or committing aggression. Right. So here's the deal. So for that to work, you need a society where information, good, valid information is spread and everybody has access to it. You don't have that type of society right now. We have too many things in the way to function like that in a time that's very, very dangerous. And I can see where people are saying we need, just need to do this and, and, tell these people to shut down whether well, they're not going to go arrest people. They, so they might go give them a ticket or something. I don't know, but uh, I, did, I don't think we've seen a lot of that. I mean, you said yourself, there's a restaurant in your area that's staying open. I don't think they've been shut down yet. Right. They haven't had the don't break in the in law. As far anybody, as I know. Yep. You know? So I, I think a lot of times this is really more suggestion wise than it is. And for insurance and legal reasons, why they do it uh, just protecting their own rear ends as it were. Sure. Um, but I mean, if you say you're okay with doing something, let's say I'm okay with being a slave to you. I mean, should I be allowed to do that or not? I mean, that's, that's part of the problem with a lot of deep libertarian philosophy and where you line up on sort of things like that. Like, uh, I don't think you can get, I don't think you can uh, sign away your rights to your own body. I, I don't think that that's possible. Um, as, as part of the scientific of the of the philosophy so that you couldn't be a slave because you can't give somebody a self-ownership of you because you are self-ownership that's the whole point um but then people say well you can own a bike and you can sell that bike right so to somebody else and it's i just think it's different so uh for a lot of we, and i don't want to go in too deep because that's that's <laughs> an hour and a half discussion right. so <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, would, I guess I would disagree. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, 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 think, I think that there is a level of, hey, this person wasn't, you know, I don't know if calling somebody like that a murderer is, is the right way to, to uh, address it. But yeah. I also don't think, hey, anybody should do whatever they want to do. It doesn't bother me. I think, well, I think that people acting recklessly and endangering other people's lives, even if they choose to do it or not, is something we should try to... Right. not have happened and i can see it being a nap violation because of that right. well it's okay so i guess uh, it's a, it's fine to agree to disagree these are mostly mm -hmm. philosophical discussions right now yeah we, and, and that's the great thing about libertarianism have. is that there is so much deep philosophy in this that mm -hmm. uh we really haven't played out through played through and i think there's still a lot a lot more to go i think yeah. a lot of people are discovering and thinking of new things all the time that are enhancing the philosophy and, and it's what I always loved about libertarianism is that people were able to have these debates and argue with mm -hmm. each other and still say, okay, well, we're cool, but you know, let's just disagree on that. But um, right. it makes people start thinking about things and have to defend their own point. 
uh, nowadays in the, in the movement, if you try to say something that's even remotely close to being different than what somebody else thinks, they're going to label you, uh, you know, not a real libertarian or guy was, right. it, 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 we're, we're dividing up into these little. Right. In a, liber- in a libertarian right. society, you got to think communities would organize yeah. based on these various ideas and maybe in certain ideas are different enough that you wouldn't be able to have the, uh, the same community as that person. But it's kind of mm-hmm. like in a libertarian society, if we're going like full utopia, it's kind of like saying, oh, I really like McDonald's and I really don't like Burger King. So I'm really going to go to McDonald's and really not going to go to Burger King. And it takes a little, like you said, the debate is fine. I think it's a fun debate. But the edge isn't there anymore. I'm not talking about government force. We're talking about preference, right? You know, what I would like to live in a community that does this. You can live in a community that does that. Or even if it's not, and for me, I'm very against the idea of HOA hell and bordered communities. But just saying I'm going to associate with people that are like-minded this way or associate people that are like-minded that way. In some cases, you know, where it's completely incompatible, say like economics, right? Or, Or abortion, it's either black, white, you know, or you just say, you know, economics is either... I mean, you could take any there. I think there will be many theories of economics that come up, but many of them are incompatible with one another. And to say like, hey, if your businesses beat my businesses, then in that case, fine. You know, yours was the better model. And, you know, I think it's a it's a debate of luxury and we tend to make make it a very violent debate. And so when the capitalists and socialists are going at each other hard and like getting hurt feelings, I absolutely have an opinion. But my opinion is based on some research and understanding and theirs is based on research and understanding. And ultimately I think both should be allowed to compete. And if the one yeah. loses to the other tip of the hat well, to them, everybody's better off. Yeah. Right. And that's one of the things I have about that whole argument too, is that I'm, I'm a capitalist uh, individualist as it were. So individualism is, is I think a more extreme version of capitalism, but um, I also understand the, the uh, voluntary socialism Mm-hmm. Uh, and what their point is, and I may disagree with it, yep. but I'm going to defend them when other people try to label them as being something that they're not, right? right. And just just like if, if I see somebody getting labeled as something that they're not, because I take the time to understand where their points is and what they're right. where they're coming from, I'm going to step in and defend them. It doesn't mean I agree with them. Right. It just means that they have the right to have that opinion. And uh, if you want to not have that be the prevailing opinion, then make your opinion better. Right. You know, and I I think that's kind of the cherry on top to this kind of disagreement. You still think that it's aggression to go to spring break. I still think it isn't. But you know what? We're not in a utopia. This is what we have. If the government must exist, let's make it function like it should. If the government, if this is a chance for less government, I think both of us see that, then let's use those opportunities to show how culture would be much better at taking care of this than some type of force. <laughs> and I think that, you know, I, I think we can look back and I can say like, ha ha, government up overstepped its bounds, told you so. And you can be like, ha ha, lots of people died because of that spring break thing, told you so. And, you mm-hmm. know, you know, and that's, and that's just something that right now we're making that assessment based on how, how we feel. But I think we can respectfully understand. I mean, it sounds like you understand my point of view. I understand your point. No, of no, view. Yeah, completely. You know, I completely understand yeah. what you're saying. And I agree. Yeah. And I, and I don't necessarily disagree with you. As, right. as it were, I just think that there are other levels and thoughts that layer in there that can make right. the other opinion be valid too. And I one think that's, that, I go back and forth yeah. on that one, you know, myself, I'm like, well, yeah, that should be, ava- you should be able to do that. But then again, right. that, you know, so that, that's the, the problem there is that you, 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 there are layers in there that almost everybody, it's hard works, to make definitive statements on yes, some of that stuff. Almost everybody works within the system to some degree. You know, like, yeah. like I, I think most libertarians are for balancing the budget. I think some libertarians are against voting, but a lot of those that are hardcore against voting are really big on jury nullification. Well, both of those work are tools within an oppressive system. You know what I mean? So like, wh- wh- where's your line? You know, ultimately everybody at the end of the day has to be some degree of pragmatist because if you don't make a comprehensive strategy, I know that word carries a lot of fire and vitriol with it. I don't care. But everybody has to use some amount of common sense. This is what we have. What good is philosophy if we stick to talking about hypotheticals all day? This is what we're dealing with right now. Yeah, so, you have to accept the reality that you're in. Yes. I mean, it's great to discuss a philosophy of a, a brand new society that doesn't exist that we're going to start from scratch on. Mm-hmm. Great. That's never going to happen because we're never starting from scratch. We have what we have. We have history. We have current state. Right. Let's figure out how to get from where we're at now to where we would like to be. But understand, we may not be able to create the perfect society from scratch like we love to do. 
And don't, and, and don't take that to mean that you're never going to get your opportunity. People thought we were nuts when we were talking about ending the drug war 20, 30 years ago. And oh, yeah. lo, lo and behold, here we are. You yeah. know, you take look, these Look what libertarians used to get knocked on because they're, they're out there. They're crazy. They, yeah. they are, you know. And what were we, we were talking about? We were talking about ending the drug war. We were talking about, uh, not, uh, about letting gay people get married. Mm-hmm. Well, both of those things happened and yep. it got embraced. Uh, by society. So what other things have libertarians been saying right. that will eventually come out to be the right way to go? If you're an economist, the dollar ain't looking so good right now. Guys. Mm-hmm. Like you may yeah. get an opportunity. I don't think gold's on looking that. good either. <laughs> Take an op- Right. Exactly. Take the opportunity. Like right now, like that, you know, that's just what's happening. Anyhow, uh, Reynold, did you have anything you wanted to add before I go here? I know we're kind of late getting off of this, but yeah. No, I think we're fine. I'm, I'm, uh, if I'm on a podcast, on one of these episodes, you can expect to go late because that's okay. how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet. Uh, I want to end this, guys. Thanks for joining us. We're actually going to be back in just a couple minutes here because we're going to be uh, we're going to be having actually some more fun. We're going to be talking about uh, the uh, the uh, Pelosi anti insider trading act here in just a minute, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So stick with us on the network. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, and you guys all have a good one. <laughs>